Uh, awesome. Can you give us a, a timeline about yourself and uh, how that got into pre-search? Yeah, uh, I I kind of got into the internet fairly early, like late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, and it was an amazing place. It was this kind of free and open land and uh, no rules, nobody really dominating the web at that point. And uh, it was amazing, honestly, those those early days. Uh, you know, when I was 21, I had uh, a $2,500 a month T1 internet connection in my bedroom. I had six servers running. I was, you know, serving web pages. Uh, I kind of was around before Google actually became a thing. And uh, uh, then, you know, I was an early promoter of, of Google along with many others and uh, have another company called shopcity.com that I've been running for uh, a pretty long time. And uh, in 2011, woke up one day and all of our sites, which had been you know, ranking really well, uh, done in partnership with city governments and different uh, local authorities, all of a sudden they were on page eight of Google. We're like, what the hell's going on? And so we ended up uh, you know, getting into a bit of a, a battle with Google. There was an FTC investigation that was underway and uh, we ended up joining in on that and uh, ended up kind of getting our issue resolved, but realized through that just how much market power Google had and, you know, how many thousands and thousands of others this had happened to and just started thinking, man, like search is way too powerful, way too concentrated with, you know, just one company dominating 92% of searches and uh, came up with the concept for pre-search in like 2013, 2014. And uh, I kind of thought of it as like the Switzerland of search. So it wasn't just a search engine. It was a way that you could access many different search engines as well and uh, kind of have a bit of a level playing field. And so built an early product, uh, got some good feedback on it, but didn't really have a go to market strategy. And then in 2017, kind of discovered Ethereum, realized that we could tokenize the whole platform and basically crowdfund it and then build a model where we would reward people for switching their searches over to pre-search. And then we could have an advertising engine that utilized the token as a payment mechanism. And so kind of been uh, cranking away on it ever since then. Awesome. I want to get into kind of how, I want to get into searching a little bit, but you were talking about the early internet and how it was more decentralized than a later version. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, they, there there have always been walled gardens. You know, there was like AOL in the very early days. And then, you know, you definitely had platforms that had significant reach, uh, you know, whether it was MSN chat in the early days or there was a thing called ICQ back in the day. Uh, both those had significant reach. Uh, but, you know, I, th I think one of the big differences, it was, you know, kind of pre-Facebook, people used aliases and they used pseudonyms. They didn't use their real name for a lot of stuff. And most people were still really privacy conscious and, you know, LinkedIn didn't exist. And the thought of like putting out the amount of information that we all put out online uh, these days was just, you know, not there. And so it, it kind of gave everybody a little bit more freedom to, uh, you know, I think just, you know, be creative, speak your mind. Uh, it was generally more forums were, were kind of, you know, the way that a lot of people communicated around different topics. And, you know, a lot of that stuff still exists. It's just that it's largely been subsumed by Facebook and Google. And, uh, you know, the amount of just ad revenue that those two uh, companies have kind of pulled away from the entire rest of the ecosystem, everybody else is kind of left with the scraps. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I think it's not worse now. I think it's, you know, in many ways, it's, it's certainly better as well. And certainly that from a technology standpoint and connectivity uh, but there was kind of this like early internet ethos where, where everybody was kind of like pirates and, you know, we were kind of out there on the open seas and we were free to do what we wanted. And now there's just, you know, kind of becoming, and especially, you know, with some of this COVID stuff and vaccine passports, which are going to become, you know, the global digital ID, uh, all these, these things kind of coming. Uh, I, I still have this vision for where the internet was. And, you know, the, the power that it brought to individuals and uh, the ability that it, it kind of gave creators and uh, in just kind of this free and unfettered landscape. And uh, I can just see that kind of being whittled away. 
And, uh, you know, I, I, I would love to see if we could take the best of what we have today and then, you know, kind of return a little bit of the, that ethos and, and try to prevent some of these initiatives that I think are, are really going to uh, harm both privacy as well as individual rights and freedom. How what? do you, um, so how do you plan on like moving, I don't want to say the masses, but like a good amount of people over to like decentralized platforms and services? I, I think it's it's just happening organically, honestly. I mean, and the, the beauty of decentralization is, you know, there's no one person or one project or, or company that's that's responsible. I think, uh, you know, it's it's not going to be the, the majority to start for sure. It never is. It's always kind of that, uh, you know, early adopter uh, type type crowd. Um, but I, th I think, you know, because of crypto, I think that that has really been growing and there's uh, already a significant demographic of people that are just kind of waking up to, you know, the power of just controlling your own money. You know, that, that that's like kind of the first and fundamental kind of bedrock foundation that we need in order to be free. And as people start to, you know, get that power and start to realize uh, that it can be different, then they start looking at all these different decentralized alternatives, you know, BitChute instead of YouTube or, uh, you know, PreSearch instead of Google. Uh, there's so many different ones that are, that are coming up, different social networks. And uh, I, I think ultimately, you know, so some of the stuff with like where the powers that be are kind of steering us are, are somewhat aligned, you know, the, the potential to have like a digital ID. But I think having one that's federated and, and where we ha are still kind of self-sovereign and not within the framework of some organization that's going to implement a social credit score according to what they you know, want to see and how they want us to behave, uh, I think is, uh, is really important. So I, I, I think you know, there's definitely um, the, the technology is maturing and we're getting ourselves uh, just kind of organically to a point where, you know, hundred or, or hundreds of millions of people uh, kind of, you know, are aware, care. And, and again, some of this, this stuff that's going on out in the world, I mean, if you see what's happening in Austria, what's happening in Australia, all these places where they're, they're implementing these draconian lockdowns and they're trying to really, you know, control the populace. Uh, there, there's more people that are waking up to the dangers of uh you know that centralized power and that centralized control and you know what it can do to uh individual liberty and and freedom and so as that starts to happen kind of the natural pushback is people looking at alternatives how do we escape that system how do we kind of create a parallel system and that to me is where you know decentralized technology and cryptocurrency are going to kind of really fit into that mix and, and hopefully give us a bit of a, an escape hatch out of what is otherwise, you know, kind of uh, uh, already been demonstrated in, in China with the social credit system that they have where, you know, we're all just totally under control. So uh, yeah, I, th I, th I think it's happening and uh, it, it doesn't have to be everybody for sure. I was going to ask is, do you think that will there be a, a, a majority of people that will be incentivized or naturally lean into decentralized things or is it always just going to be a little bit more of a minority of kind of like tech people or people who are into that is there can you can you make a product that is good enough so people don't really care about the tech behind of it yeah i i, I think so absolutely i mean considering really still how early we are uh you know with, with kind of decentralization really getting traction and and people realizing that there's a problem and realizing that uh, we need these alternatives uh, there, there's already I mean the, the, the beauty of it is is that you know kind of the centralized powers that be have already paved the way uh, and so we can leverage a lot of the uh, infrastructure that has been built and there are ways that we can reach many more people much faster uh, you know a lot of the uh, kind of you know the the, the frameworks, have already been established uh, that we can utilize for go-to-market strategies and that we can utilize uh, just to kind of bootstrap uh, until we're at that point where we're fully, you know, decentralized. And I, I mean, there's some interesting stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I 
I'm trying to hold out faith that Elon Musk is a good guy. Cause if he is man, honestly, like Starlink, we've got like a parallel internet potentially that uh, could be global in, in scale. And uh, you know, when you start thinking about stuff like that, like, man, the future could be really exciting. Uh, so I I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, you know, we're, we're going to just get enough people. It's, it's just about getting to that critical mass point. And I think we're, we're almost there already. Truthfully, we might already uh, be there. And, uh, you know, there's just so many people that are, that are waking up every day and realizing that, you know, there's something that's off with this kind of centralized system and these powers that be, and, uh, they're looking at alternatives. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the way that it always happens, I mean, you can't aim for kind of the end, uh, state and you can't expect the masses to, uh, be early adopters. I mean, it's, it's always, uh, you know, those, those kind of visionaries, uh, to start. And there were many of them within the crypto space who, who really laid an amazing foundation for us, one of personal responsibility and one where, you know, do your own research and, uh, all those kinds of, you know, really fundamental principles that, that I think are still strong enough within the space, even as it's kind of, you know, expanded and it's been a little bit co-opted by, you know, the, the financial uh, sector to become a little bit of, you know, the Wall Street 2.0. Uh, I think there's still that kind of fundamental ethos and a lot of the people who are significant, you know, uh, asset holders, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, any of the, the really kind of, you know, core chains, I mean, they're, they're very much libertarian and they're, they're definitely uh, freedom oriented and uh, having that kind of power uh, rest with those types of people, I think is a really positive thing for this space. So uh, I, I think, you know, it's, it's enough that, you know, as you expand and you bring more people in, it kind of like so you lose some of that, but I think that there's enough that it's going to uh, continue to permeate. And uh, as more people get onboarded, they're, they're still going to, you know, kind of end up in, in a better spot than they would otherwise, you know, like, like thinking of, you know, Facebook with, you know, whatever Libra or DM or whatever the heck they're calling it now, having that as, you know, a, or, or, you know, these central bank digital currencies where they want to be able to like, you know, zap your bank account. If you speak out against, you know, COVID stuff, it's, it's insane. So, you know, I, I think there's enough people that are going to uh, just kind of keep pushing there and it's going to take time, but we'll get there. For people that may not 100% understand like how your process works, can you explain like decentralization, running a node on your device and how that um, helps create research? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically uh, when you do a search, it, it comes into uh, what we call a node gateway. And so uh, over time, we'll, we'll continue to decentralize that whole layer of infrastructure. Right now, we're more focused on the, the kind of sub layer of that. So, so you do a query, it hits uh, a node gateway. It then basically anonymizes your search. So it gets rid of any uh, identifying information. And then it passes it over to uh, this network of nodes. Uh, there's about 46,000 of them that are, are running currently on our test net. Uh, the main net is going to go live, uh, you know, early in Q1 of 2022. And so as uh, the query then hits those nodes, then they go out to a whole bunch of different sources, existing search engines, databases, APIs, and kind of combine those results back and then pass it back to the node gateway. And then that uh, returns the results to you. Uh, over time, we'll be building our own index uh, that will be fully independent. And uh, there will be, you know, all different types of node functions, uh, whether it's, you know, crawling or indexing. Uh, there's, there's many different kind of, uh, within, you know, operating a search engine, different, uh, functions and, and they have different hardware requirements, different kind of profiles, and, uh, there will eventually be different types of rewards, uh, different reward rates for the, the work that's being done. Uh, but to start, you know, we have been trying to, uh, create something that, that is as usable as Google and uh, ensure that, you know, we've kind of got the long tail of search covered, which is like all those like random obscure queries, which are really, really hard to, uh, to do. And uh, so, you know, we've, we've had pretty solid success so far, about 2.9 million registered users right now doing uh, more than three and a half million searches a day. 
And, uh, you know, everything kind of is just continuing to come together. The way that we, we set up the project, we kind of said in our early white paper, hey, we're going to start basically centralized and then over time decentralize it more and more. So eventually that will extend to, you know, full governance. Uh, but, you know, we've been trying to get it to a point where it's kind of, you know, the, the core product is usable and we've got a basically sustainable token economy. And uh, as we get that, then it's about, you know, kind of me getting out of the, the way and enabling more of the community to do, uh, you know, governance on the project.